Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, definitely welcome to our channel. Take a look around. We have plenty of content for you to binge, organized and convenient playlists by actor, uh, decade, director. If you love old movies, you've landed in the right spot because what we do on this channel is watch them together from start to finish. So that's kind of the caveat, the difference that you'll find here on this channel. We are going to watch the entire film. Click on any video of mine because you'll notice that the artwork is a scene from the movie, something to do with the movie stars from the movie and the name on the thumbnail is the name of the film that is because guess what we're gonna watch the whole entire film you have to have access to the film check out my sister pinterest page there's always a link in the description of every video that takes you to an accompanying pinterest board that i make filling it with pictures just from that film within that board is where i can give you information about a location locations that i see that the film is available so that you can push play on the exact same version that i'm watching let me also show you the wall of my living room which is decorated like this because old movies are important to me for the past 32 years let's see please like my videos if you like the content take that mindset across all of youtube it is a very helpful very helpful people and free way that you can help any content creators channel what it really does is it signals youtube to get their act together with the algorithm and understand that the value is there on the content and they will then try and recommend it to additional people so it's just that's how you can help you can help pass the word along about our channel um let's see i checked the description of my videos it's filled with lots of info a little synopsis of the film clickable timestamps to help you get straight into the countdown of where we push the movie together information about my sister member site i have packages going on over there everything starts with unlimited access to a package at five dollars a month what there is is every video on this channel over there ad free forever and somebody miss jane has made use of that package because she did a 30-day rental of roman holiday every single title in any package on my member site you can rent for two dollars for 30 days of access to it ad free so miss jane you will always get your shout out thank you so much for showing me that support i really will always remember you you're always going to be the first um, then there is a member exclusive package where we have films that we're only watching over in that space. Those movies are a little bit harder to find. They're not in the platforms that I find them that we watch here on this channel. So you do have to be a little bit more of a connoisseur in order to get access to those films. Do you own them? They are the top of the AFI 100 list. So we, in that vein, along with really the just really crucial classics that I have loved, seen very rarely over time remember them right i've seen them once in a blip little rotation on amc back in the day one month period they played it i remember that film for 30 years and i haven't seen it enough over time let's watch that movie we're gonna watch it over there if you really want to kind of get to know my knowledge of film history my taste so that site is a combination of those films that i just really know and love or the top afi 100 citizen kane godfather i threw in godfather part two for good measure and i know it's also on that list it's just not number two the way that godfather is and then we've also done number five on their list which is singing in the rain um gone with the wind jezebel you know major major finds over there guys so if you love the experience that we have over here and you just want to continue to watch some more content that you know that i don't leave you hanging so i can let you know how you can get your access to the film as well that package starts at five dollars a month i have links in the description to amazon products that i totally swear by because i'm using them in this house um, and if you make a purchase using any of my links i will get a pennies on the dollar kickback it's a way to help support the channel this is very much needed right now i've got it full blast my electric blanket i also have my little space heater at my feet here small little footprint very quiet that same little footprint this past summer of 2022 i was using a little 
personal air conditioning unit that same size. Um, I have photo paper to make use of the digital products that I will mention shortly um, that you can print out for yourself. I have a 15 foot HDMI cable allowing me to have my laptop right here and my TV over here on this side of my room and they're connected so the signal doesn't drop. Um, and then also a digital photo frame which is really cool to make use of my new digital products that I've created. So I created a 2023 calendar, picture calendar, a 2023 movie stars calendar. Cary Grant is one of the artists of the month um, of January because his birthday is this month. We have Sydney Poitier, we have, you can see them, I've got it cycling on my screen, but all of those stars, right? So beautiful, high resolution, rare photos. It's a photo calendar of movie stars and filling in that gap in the market. If you know a classic film fanatic, I promise you they would love a calendar that is totally on brand for their interests, right? Oh my gosh. These major movie stars and it's a functional calendar for 2023 with holidays included. It's a perfect spot-on gift guys. Um, I also have a movie diary. It was an adorable little product that was actually on the market in 1939. You get it. What are your critiques of the film? Become a crucial classics connoisseur and to help you do that I've put some prompts at the top to pay attention to some really key stats that we see at the beginning of all of these movies but let's start to up our knowledge and be able to speak to our favorite screenplay writers, our favorite composers, our favorite producers. I also have a mega pack of photos, which is what I mentioned would be cool for that digital photo frame. Um, 65 photos, those photos from my calendar, I blew each individual picture up to full size eight and a half by 11. So with that purchase, it's a digital purchase, they're all digital purchases, you'll download it and get the file right then. You don't have to wait for it to be delivered hard copy. If you would like a hard copy version of it, you can print it or you can use it um, electronically. The calendar includes both a PDF and JPEG. So right now I'm using the JPEGs as my desktop, my desktop background. Carrie is my January desktop background. Coming up tomorrow will be Sydney Poitier. The best ways to go about doing this different thing that we do on this channel, which is watch the whole entire movie. Set it up, everything on one screen. The video of me and your copy of the movie. There's ways to do it. First of all, if you can't do it, can watch every single movie, no barrier to entry, push play and launch the movie on your phone. The way you would do that is if you're finding yourself in a situation where you don't have the ability to cast and something, the other device doesn't have access to the links, so you can't necessarily watch the movie on that, okay? You need access to the links in the description of my video to be able to push play on the movie. And if the only kind of device that you have handy that has access to those links is the phone, then you no barrier to entry, watch the movie on the phone and the video of me on whatever device is available. Um, if you're in a situation where there's not, not that barrier to entry, then connect via an HDMI cable from your device to your TV. Launch the video of me in one tab, the video of the movie in another, lock them side by side, pull the movie to take up more of the screen, set that up the way you like on your laptop more than likely, it could be your tablet as well. Then you've got one screen, but I want you watching it on your biggest screen. So take an HDMI cable from that, plug it into your TV. I want you really watching this, enjoying the movie. That is what should be taking up the primest part of the real estate of your screen. If you can accomplish the coolest thing, you'll do it via picture in picture, okay? So I still do picture in picture people using my HDMI cable, okay? because I told, I think I said, I don't know, I've recorded this a couple of times, but I have spotty internet. So whenever I try and do the casting option, I promise at some point throughout the playback, it's gonna drop because my internet is just that weak of a signal. So I can still do the picture in picture setup. I just will have it going via my HDMI cable from my computer into my TV and then I'm not gonna have a drop happen. But casting is you take your computer, you cast it to your TV or your tablet to your TV, push play on the movie, actually launch it because there usually is a little bit of a lag. So let that happen, pause it, rewind it all the way back to zero. That way you know the next time you push play with me, it's going to start right away. Come back to this video of me, play on TV picture in picture, it shrinks me, floats me, you move me to a small corner of the movie and then everything's on one screen and your biggest screen. You've got the movie taking up your whole entire screen. I'm just a little teeny tiny box in the corner. 
everything that I'm saying is because I'm touching the film, it's in perfect sync. You can also make sure that this little runtime timer in the corner is the hour, minute, and second that your playback of the movie is, and we're in perfect sync. So that's what we do on this channel. Now let's talk about this specific film, The Searchers. This is our last title for the month of January. I knew I was gonna come and hit you with the biggest titles that just really, I was given, you know, duds this month. That's the reason why the performance that we have this month kind of really sucks, you guys. Um, as far as our revenue is concerned, we got monetized in June and since that month we were able to make a little check and we have been making literally a hundred dollars more each month since then this month performance was so dismal we stepped back hundreds of dollars um, uh, four months back so I'm it was real people and like I mentioned in our last video there are some really that channel that I told you I thought it had a hundred thousand subscribers he has seven hundred thousand subscribers there was another guy has over a million they both were talking about what they experienced it was not just me it definitely was me and I thought I'm a smaller channel things are gonna hit and miss month to month this is definitely not stable and reliable income <laughs> okay um but uh because fuck you know to lose 40 percent of my income uh is that ain't nobody got time to not be able to bank you know on getting bills paid so um when people even get to making you know major checks they can't take that 60 70 percent of a hit either so you know some stuff is going on on this platform whether they're going to be up front and out and about about it um or not but it, it happened this month okay <laughs> to a lot of people i think a lot of people just took their hits and thought it was just them but uh you know when you find out it wasn't just you then what's going on but anyway um that it doesn't really have anything to do with this movie yet, right? So it was just that I was saying, I hit you guys hard with four star classics this month. Um, we didn't have a dud and we didn't have performance and views that reflects that. Anyway, this was definitely one of the titles that I just immediately brainstormed and knew I was hitting you with this month. I don't like John Wayne as a person. I have no hesitation to say that. The first time that I learned anything about him, I was at my black grandmother's house in her basement going through her prized ebony magazines from the 1970s. She has stuff from earlier than that, but her subscription was up, running, never seemed to lapse during the 1970s. I'm black and I'm proud. I will be doing Black History Month movies for Black History Month next month. And when we did that last year, we did something for Sounder and I took you through my actual grandmother's Ebony magazine from 1972 when the movie Sounder was released and I was taking you through that magazine. I spent many an hour reviewing and reading my grandmother's old school Ebony magazines. And so mm, I was into old movies already at that point in time, but the, I'd never really seen a John Wayne movie yet at that point. I saw an article about him, a very in-depth article about him in 1972. I just refreshed myself on it. I, did, I didn't feel like reading it. It was like a six to seven page in-depth ass article about the problem that he was. And I don't like him as a person, people. And it really prevented my exploration of his catalog. I've told you guys, I'm Mexican and black. So I wasn't raised by my Mexican mom. And when I came to know her when I was going to college, it was this weird thing that we were both hardcore up into these old movies. So my mom was somebody kind of basically meeting her and she is past me and her knowledge of classic film. And it's just like as intense and real for her a passion as it is for me. And she loves John Wayne and I don't get that and I don't, you know, relate to that. And I explained to her what I knew about things that he has said specifically about black people. You know, it wasn't just black people. My problem is what he had to say about black people. Um, so she didn't know about that though. And she loved John Wayne movies. And so through her, I've dipped a toe. This is probably, and I, I don't have a problem with saying this to you guys, going to be the last John Wayne movie on the channel. Um, I really don't like the man. It's really a conflict for me to watch him. Um, and I didn't do it until very far into watching classic films. Um, I would say I had been watching classic movies for 20 years before I allowed myself to sit through a John Wayne movie. This very likely was the first one. And the opening scene, 
The cinematography of this movie can kind of overpower how much I don't like John Wayne. So I watched the movie and um, it is an interesting movie. Um, he's a pretty intense dude in this movie. The thing, I just read some backup information on it. And so if you guys have dropped off, if you've got to unsubscribe because I don't like John Wayne again, you know, as we have additions and you know losses of subscribers we're calibrating to the right audience this is my channel i say the things about classic films that i need to say that are real for me you can relate to that you can agree to disagree with that you can subscribe or unsubscribe i don't give half of an f about the things that i need to say about my experience um and whether or not that works for you just so you know, okay? And you guys know that by now. I make no apologies and I will never sugarcoat or not address issues that need to be addressed. So anyway, um, I watched this film and what I just noticed about it is that everybody, everybody that has a speaking line in this movie shouts. And I was just like, what the F is everybody screaming for so much in this movie? I mean, I feel like, it's an interesting and on-purpose little touch that they added to it, but it, so I haven't seen this movie probably, I've seen it twice, because I know I saw it the first time that I did, and I just couldn't help that I enjoyed the film, though I knew I didn't like the man. And I know I've probably only seen it one more time after that. Um, but I, I know it was definitely that second time that it was just like, why the F is everybody literally yelling as they are addressing each other in this film? Um, he takes it really far, as far as whatever his motivations are. Um, he, he becomes obsessed, but you know it's not just for the um, right reason. It's not for, like, the right reason. And here was some tea that I just got by doing this research on the film. Here was an interesting little twist that I think will make sense, and you'll definitely have a perspective to be looking for it. He hits the scene, right? I'm not gonna, I don't want to spoil the movie at all, but evidently he ain't been on the scene for about eight years, okay? And just evidently there's a little eight-year-old child right there too that he's never met, and um, whose kid is that? So, mm, that's just a little tidbit that just somebody threw out there, like, is that what's going on in this movie? Because go on ahead and pay attention to what there is to pay attention to, and then it will also just kind of maybe further give some explanation as to this obsessive journey that he goes on. Um, so yeah, enough said, you know, I've, you know, for the John Wayne movies that I have on this channel, that have performed the way that they have, I would never want it to be confused <laughs> that those movies are on this channel <laughs> because I'm all about that dude. I'm not, okay? So, uh, let me get it queued up. We will do our countdown and let's watch The Searchers, even though, you know what, this is what it is to say about this movie. Let me, don't skip over or gloss over this. What it is to say about this movie, and this is, you know, here's a perspective, people. Being, being a minority and having a passion for these classic films, there are conflicts a lot of the fucking time, okay? And, you know, it's just a knowledge of who you are. Like, I'm black all day, every day, proud of it all day, every day. So I don't ever feel a compromise about knowing that I'm black um, and leading with that I'm black. I don't need to lead with, I'm half Mexican, you know, I'm black. You know, I'm black and I'm Mexican, and so guess what I am, I'm black. Um, and I'm proud of that. As long as I'm really good and just comfortable with that, I can see fucked up things in these movies kind of ever, you know, and just keep it moving. I have an appreciation for the film. It really is film. It's filmmaking, it's the cinematography, it's the costumes, it's the stories. Um, there are effed up little parts that show themselves heavily from this time. Uh, that last movie that we just watched, they even took it a step further with using that word a few times too many. So, you know, it's just like, um, okay, I liked the movie anyway. Okay, so <laughs> that's what we're about to experience with this one. Um, and yeah, let's get ready. Okay, you've seen it on the screen, a runtime of an hour, 56, 48. Um, 1956, playing in three, two, one, click. And what is interesting, Warner Brothers.
time. I've watched a few more of this man's movies. It's the three we have on this channel, plus a few more. Um, the thing I always seemed to notice about him, there's Ward Bond, was Republic always being the studio that he was associated with. So this Warner Brothers thing is a departure. Frank S. Nugent is the screenplay, okay. Cinematographer is Wyndon C. Hawk. This cinematography in this movie, I would have to say, is one of the most... Max Steiner does the music. We see him all the time. Costumes. Let's see. No, the cinematography in this movie has got to be one of the most beautiful. Um, Anne Peck and Frank Beetson. Patrick Ford is an associate producer, and then John Ford, he's John Ford's brother. I mean, this opening scene, right? Isn't it going to just open into a breathtaking scene? Which I promise you, people, is how I would strap in to watch a John Wayne movie. Only. This has to have been the first one that I ever did. Watch. All right, yeah. Oh, look at how far away he is, and... She just sensed that he was here, huh? Because the door was closed at first. Well, she seems a little worried as long as she was looking at him about that, right? And that's his brother. Oh, she's another one. Oh, that's the same. Oh, yeah, so the little girl <laughs> is, Lucy's not eight, right? He ain't never seen that little girl before. He didn't know nothing about her. Oh, he wasn't there. Well, fool, where the F were you? Then. Look at him. Oh, is it too far away, Ethan? He's seriously, look at how he's looking at his brother's woman. Oh, still. It's definitely without that little shady <laughs> sipping the tea little tidbit that somebody threw in as their suspicion of what's going on in this movie. The awkwardness between those two is too blatant anyway. Oh, oh God. Oh, well, he's a part of this family. Your ass has been gone for eight years. He has a seat at the table.
Okay, and we sure won't try to, John Wayne. I'd leave it alone. This poor young man feels like he's kicked out of the house, needs to sit on the step outside by himself until it's bedtime. Because it's not real gold. <laughs> oh, Lucy ain't got no problem with asking for her little gift, too, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, hey, little Lu um, Deborah, Lucy. Lucy. Hey, Lucy. You're as little as when I last was here eight years ago. Oh, yeah. No. I'm not Lucy. I'm Deborah. You never saw me, Uncle Ethan, because I'm exactly eight years old. How long it's been that you've been gone? Oh, they were a little group of people. Look at, oh. Why? Oh, full. Was he? You know, I don't know that at all his brother was bringing up the topic of money for him to be able... He was just asking, where the fuck have you been? Oh, did he steal it? I mean... Like, how did he earn it? Oh, he sure is putting it in the family safe, huh? Yeah, I mean, seriously, what made that full fly off the handle like that, that has to be past history between him and his brother or some shit that it ever comes across like he's not just welcome to stay without paying some of the mortgage or the rent, right? Are these just people that I've heard that he's here that are coming to say hello? open up that doesn't seem like just coming to visit oh this falls always a reverend huh? I mean, everybody can hear. I can use the coffee too. I'm drinking it right now. They sure do have donuts back in this. These type of Western movies, they're making donuts. You know what the other one is? It's Angel and the Bad Man Home. Huh? 
Oh, why is he? Oh, because they need to go find who stole those fool's pigs. Look at her. He's, um, yeah, I got this badge. Oh. Oh, so he can't be sworn in. But that doesn't mean he's not wanted. No question, John Wayne is not a good person in this movie. Okay, I'm just, let me, it ain't nothing to do with him as a person in this movie. Don't get it twisted. Like, he is not a good person in this movie. And so right here, right now. Oh, well, Lucy, what were you doing? You just moved away to a different spot to do it. Um, oh, is that Ethan's coat? Because he's getting ready to leave with the Reverend. Oh, look at how the Reverend's just trying to mind his business, huh? He doesn't need to have a word with sister, whatever her name is. So he wanted his brother to stay at his own house. Because he's got a sneaking suspicion. And it's, you know, that's also based on his history. Because, okay, how is the boy that he hates that was sitting at the table there he found him after a raid that killed all of his family and so then clearly his brother and sister-in-law raised have been raising that boy since he dipped out eight years ago so he's got history with exactly where this house is located the whole entire territory and the war ended three years ago and he has not come back and fits a description, a lot of descriptions of wanted people. Oh, probably don't call him that. Are you? Okay, well.
Okay, did they find this dude's pigs? Or what's going on? Well, what is there to see? What's going on? I mean, to me, is there some type of a disease that's going on? No, oh, okay, no. Well, so you have a sneaking suspicion that they could be heading to your brother's house? And you're not heading your horse? I mean, that's fine. Respect your horse. You're not going to get more out of him. That's just an interesting tactic, right? In these movies, when it comes to horses, we don't see ever that type of practicality about um, the needs of the horse in front of this degree of an emergency, right? I mean, I'm not, but y'all know I love the horses, so I'm not mad at him being real about that. It's like he's not going to get more out of his horse than he can but this situation is creepy as f right now right well i'd be creeped out if the sky looked like this every night at this house <laughs> you know what i mean like i've never seen a sunset looking like this uh, okay well it's giving a creepy af apocalyptic look It's not Ethan or hmm. well this is a situation yeah go on ahead and start boarding it up get inside get your guns loaded and she's gonna scream right That's too bad. See, this right here... Hold the hell up. I got a real important question. Y'all ain't sending none of these other kids up out of this shit right now? Because of all the rest of them gonna have a gun? 
and a window to be on. Um, I am like I'm so serious. I have problems with this. Okay, we didn't, we're not going to get to see what the setup was. Oh, is Horace passed away? So, Wayne's character is already developed, right, for being the troubled soul that he is, you know, and just through that barrier of humanity, he's going to have to process this, and it ain't going to help him make any improvements. But, you know, I think just having some humanity for him, like, what a loss. This is that boy. What's his name? Does he punch it? Oh. Okay. See, he's saying Lucy and Debbie. It wasn't even about Lucy and Debbie. It was only about Debbie. I mean... I really, seriously, I would have needed to see a shot of each one of them left in the house needing to be armed and out a window to do what they needed to do to justify why they sent that child out there by herself and didn't save, give their other children a chance to be saved. There's no more time, what, because right now, today, he's getting started on his search, and everybody, he's expecting all of the men to come with him. boys are left it's just the one dude right here what is this dude's name i'm gonna have to pay attention one time if i hear them use his name again i know they already have right i didn't catch it her boys the son didn't survive Oh, he's Captain Clayton, right? Aww, poor 
pieces. Well, who did it? Oh, so is he leaving? His name isn't Blankethead. So that's the dude right there that was with Lucy. Well, how else? Yeah, are you gonna do it? Oh. Running off their pony herd. Oh, okay. Oh, well, he said he was an eighth. Okay. That's not what it's about for him. I'm like, why are they talking about the girls? Because obviously, okay, the house was burned down and he was able to go in there and they only had bodies of everybody but Lucy and the little girl. So that's what everybody else on this little search is out here for. A hopeful search and rescue of these two niñas, but... To have to go through all these changes to convince him of using a tactic that makes it an option that they could save the girls. Well, why, Ethan? I mean, this is where he told them to come to. Okay, well, that's not a bird. Now y'all are about to get jumped. Who is no longer with us is uh, his woman. Oh, okay. Well, um, this is happening. They don't see him. They do. It's on right now, right? I mean, y'all are right here at each other. Boy, I forgot about this part. What in the world is going on right now? Because these fools have guns, right? Wow, 
this is weird. Everybody's just in full view of each other. They don't have guns or they do? The natives. Okay, so they're flanking them on both sides. Okay, that's not the question. Um, why did he just put his bandana around his ears like that? What's that for? Do these people have guns? I did just now see two rifles. Wow. Yeah, they're shooting at them. All right, why did that happen to them? Seriously? I'm just saying, I'm like, none of you guys are getting shot? Lucky for you, you know? One person did. What did he... Ethan just said something about the other side of the river. Well, they made it to the other side of the river. But now they're posting up to... Not let them cross over, right? Damn, that man's arm is sleeved up. Is this dude one of them? Because, I mean, is, he's not giving me a white man. Oh, okay. Well, you know, he's not such an I told you so person, right? Does he see the girls? Yeah, I would wait. Good, good job on waiting, right? I was just, like, not as many of them have guns. You could have let them get closer, I think, right? Oh, his name is Marty. He got somebody and then he freaked out about the fact that he did. What is that right there? Was that a person? We didn't see the girls, huh? Oh, does he have range to shoot across the river like that?
Okay, well, I think you made that clear. Oh, you care? Not those ones. And so then if they're not, it's just about vengeance, right? It's just about, um, enough people are splitting off from this right now, you know what I mean? To where if that is not what you're down for and about, like the Reverend, I mean, that was war crimes that he was not about. Oh, they have to stop. I knew he said eat. Okay, you said that before, yeah. So, yeah, and just looking up about this movie. They said, you know, th it's interesting because this is 56 and this movie does cover a lot of themes. And I think that we got the theme about well, Debbie's origin story. And then this right here, too. It's unspoken, right? And they just said he's about to get his knife and he'll be, and that's to signify a violent act that he has just gotten proof of. And these two are too young to understand firsthand. That was very powerful. Didn't 
tell them what happens to this dude right here He let him go. I thought he didn't let him go. So they just got Brad. They're not that far away. Yeah, well, Brad said they were half a mile away, and he saw their... Um, campfire smoke so they were just camped out half a mile away i love this scene it's like okay we're going through the seasons yeah this is where we are right now and on the planet what is there to say The question was, uh, do you think that we will find L Debbie? And kind of you got a little bit of a sense of a little bit of um, closer bloodline relationship to her to explain how hard they've been going so the review I think it was like um, either it wasn't Malton Ebert was saying evidently like everybody regards this as one of the greatest films ever made and it's because of what we've seen for the past 44 minutes so far and then they're like this part people that love this movie they just tolerate it but this is definitely the area where i'm telling you everybody yells so much okay yeah okay so they've just taken a break is it a holiday what are they here for So here's Vera Miles. Look here she goes. Does she smack him or something? Oh, okay. Oh no, he can. Oh, so, you know, like, Laurie, don't be a hoe because he probably doesn't even remember your name. Um, well, hopefully, you know, Laurie seems to have intentions with him. Oh, who knows, right? And is it really, you know, what's going on anyway? Like, what they're out there for? Oh, well, damn, Laurie!
still gonna watch it. Yeah, he's not your brother. Wrong. She's pretty, um, uh, fresh. Oh, here it's on. What the heck is a Texican? Are they, um, part of Mexico? Hmm, who the heck wrote to him? Who's Charlie? That kind of slow dude. I feel like they call him Moe's. Who's Charlie? Oh, he gonna read it too. Damn. Yeah, it's like, um. Oh, he didn't already open it. You know, nosy as he is. Bridges. Okay, yeah, Laurie. I mean, is she planning on marrying this fool before he leaves? Oh, well, okay, Lori. She has no propriety about this shit. That's what I'm saying. Is she planning on marrying this fool before she, she lets him leave? Yeah, like, what cattle do you have, fool? Oh. My herd? He said it again. That he doesn't matter. Oh, okay. And, uh, Lori? For you, Martin. Mm -hmm. 
she going to snatch him up to kiss him again? Good morning. How about what? They're getting married. Oh, they are. Okay. Oh, okay. He didn't know. He didn't have the memo. Okay. Better watch out you don't get splashed with some hot coffee. Wow. So the, that's why he's been tagging along now for so much time. Wow. So he has just explained his role in this search. Is he don't want Thoughtful to find her alone? Problem for the rest of his life, huh? She giving Marina Hera a run for her money. Oh, okay, really? Oh. Well, she's been making that clear. Oh, there's a marriage scene in this movie. It's a ways out, I believe. But is it based on what she just said? Does she wait for this fall? Oh, dude caught up with him, Matt Martin. Well, this fool doesn't remember that he sent him the letter. That's pretty messed up. It's a child in danger. Uh -oh. Oh. Why did he um, turn up his nose at his invitation to stay inside someplace? being followed a change in the weather 
<laughs> He's too hot by the fire. It's a good problem to have being outside. Martin's little afro, huh? His hair is thicking out. Alright, what are you doing here? Why did he do that? What is Ethan doing? Yeah, no, something's up. No. He does think they're being followed or something. Oh, that's his little fake himself. Well, these are white people that are following them. Oh. But they mean them harm? <gasps> He's about to shoot? Martin? Collateral. He's not going to appreciate that, huh? two meetings like he didn't plan on missing but he also didn't give an F if he would have <laughs> who is it oh Charlie oh uh, this is Charlie who brought the last one wow it's a red letter day Oh, yeah, he came a court and, uh, well, Charlie, um, looking like a downgrade from Martin. Oh. Well, you know, I was being so petty. It's just, like, looks-wise, maybe he's a little, um, She has to read it all up. Oh, it wasn't from Martin. Why does he have to put on his glasses to hear the letter being read? Oh, 
but not scar. This is cool. Are there lard blue ribbons? No, not that. With the hats. Oh. Okay. Where's Ethan? Yeah, there he is. He doesn't engage in this. Wait, because some of them can speak English, so... Yes, you do think that it could be Debbie. That's the reason why it De is her name Debbie. Yeah. She's coming. I can't remember how long we see her. Oh, uh, does is he going Did he already tell her about Mrs. Polly? Oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, she burning. <laughs> wow, okay, that's just... <laughs>
Oh, he understands that. Oh, well, how come homeboy right here doesn't explain what's up? He can talk to her? Martin, it doesn't occur to you to ask Ethan to set this straight? She's having a rough time out here with these two as it is. So she left. And she made a little arrow for them. Well, she pulled out right in front of you two fools. She's your wife. Um, okay. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I remembered that first snow scene and then this one too. A herd of what? Is this buffalo? Is that? Yeah, wow. This is really cool. In 1956, to gather this many took some doing. pretty authentic, huh, the way that one fell. I don't know if you can train buffalo to do that. Empty bellies? What? Look at it. He's just so... Look at his face. I mean, damn. So he, they can ask these troops if they've seen Scar. I don't get the reference that lady made before to being Texican. I was going to say, it's like, is that territory that they're in technically part of Mexico still at that point in time? Wow. Okay, I mean, did we just see those troops and nothing else? And they're just keeping it moving? Like, we don't see them interact with the troops at all? Okay. 
Well, what? Did those troops just do this to them? Oh, is that his... That's Luke. She came and hooked up with them. Oh, I felt like they were calling her Luke. Okay, it's Luke. We'll never know. So that's really weird. Um, they saw those troops right there. And they didn't go up to them. They just kept pressing on to where they came across that little camp that was just burned up. <clears throat> okay they referenced an agency before this is an agency because these are natives here as well like they sometimes allow them to live no these are not natives okay I'm curious what's going on here who these people are Oh, they are natives. Some. Okay, well, that's not Debbie. Okay, um, you couldn't recognize that that's not Debbie. It's been two years only. It's not, it hasn't been eight. Oh, okay. I don't want to catch the look, you know what I'm saying? That's pretty evil. You know what I mean? We got a lot of work to do. Oh, somebody's passed away. Oh. 
dude here strumming. Came a courtin. Um, Charlie um, is okay to look at, but I thought voice. <laughs> He's the dude um, from Rio Grande, right? one of those singing soldiers. ready to move on, huh? She ain't got no more time. No time, no time. Okay, so now they're in New Mexico. <laughs> it's Moe's. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was like, what is he pausing for? Thomas White, too. Uh oh. And I have a problem with them. Oh, okay. Everything's for a price with him. No problem, Sarah. What is this mezcal or tequila? Oh, he speaks all kinds of languages, huh? So it's business. To find out this information he needs to know about Debbie's whereabouts. Oh, he's making this food look good. Mamacita. Mas frijoles. Por favor. Oh, she's sitting down. Okay. Why are there three oh, Moses with them? Because I was like, that dude that they just did business with. Oh, he's coming. He's going all the way with them? This is them. Once again, we're in a situation where everybody sees each other. Why are there this many people coming on John Wayne's side? And who are all of these people right here? Oh, they know this Mexican man. He seemed more kind of like a Spaniard. Oh, 
Oh, because they're riding with him. John Wayne is just all up inside of their little camp right now. Whoa. What the heck? Cicatrice. They let these people come up to his TP like this. Yeah, they saw each other before the river. Boss. Oh, he speaks English. Oh, is that what it is? What'd you bring in here for? Some beans and a tortilla sounds delicious right now, Paul. You gotta hook up your beans. I'm hungry, evidently, right? Did I teach you? Oh, he understood what teach. Yeah, okay. Ethan. Yeah, no, we're too close now. He ain't gonna let this fall out of his sight. Is Debbie right there? Many, many scalps. He's calling one in particular. Or no, he, oh, he's calling to show his scalps that he's collected, but. Does she recognize them? So the question was, are all of those your wives? Yeah, that's his um, ribbon that he gave to Debbie. <clears throat> uh Okay, okay. Oh, uh, it's all like that. Uh, he's dipping out. Blood money. Okay, yeah. Oh, they got a. Got a lot of love, really, like a little. boys. Um. For real. Like, he's that scared of Scar. Like, he respects Scar that, that much. Um, probably. If dudes taken off like that, oh, they've been chasing for five years now. Oh. So what, are they going to come and get you guys right here? Oh, is that Debbie? She did recognize them.
Look at him. It didn't come. Okay. Is that Scar? Uh oh, uh oh, it's on like Donkey Kong right now, damn. Where's Debbie? They just left her? She didn't hop on this horse with Ethan, right? Or Martin? Not Ethan, Martin. They don't have her, right? Oh yeah, my question was, were they gonna come and just jump them in their little camp? The answer is yes. <laughs> That's why she ran down there to go try and tell them to leave. Oh, they got him though. So, damn Ethan. Five years, you find her, and you were taking her out. Bad person. Go hard, long, and far for her for five years. Find her. Her little mentality is fucked up, and you're taking her out. you guys gonna get out of here how many bullets do you have left do any of them have guns well thank goodness for this little water trickle huh? out in the middle of the desert I'm just like look John Wayne in this movie has been a piece of shit from since we saw him come on the scene and like I said, this search, he's got a lot of work to do, and this search has not helped him. I mean, are you effing kidding me? High likelihood, suspicion, not beyond him, that was his daughter. And stand aside. I was going to say, is there poison in it? He's going to struggle to do that. But he can write. Huh? Debbie. Oh, he gonna give him his cattle. His cattle. Debbie's cattle. Martin. Alright, well... Well, are you getting his shoulder opened up again? Or are you guys parting ways now? I guess, you know what, like, the yelling 
aspect of things is not as pervasive as I seemed to recall it from before. All right, well, is this a wedding that's happening right here or just a little party they throw once a year or something? There's a lot of people here that they did not give an impression, right, that there's this many people in their little Texican area. There are a lot of people here. What for? So that Lori doesn't have more is this their wedding oh no he's just a part of the little entertainment I mean he wouldn't come into his own wedding like that right <clears throat> it is their wedding. This is bizarre. What, why are there so many people here right now? And he called them all rangers. Like, he didn't have this many people helping to look for those two girls. What, in five years, this territory has grown like this? I was going to say, that's not Lori. It's her mom. If you've never seen this movie before, right, you're not supposed to know that a wedding takes place in it. And so they are making it very suspenseful as to what are we witnessing going on here. But it's a wedding and this dude just came in for his wedding all. Barely recognize myself. What are they back here for? Where's Debbie? Are they coming to maybe get some reinforcements that they know exactly where they're going back to? Uh, why? Okay, yeah. Oh, damn. So this time they were gone for five years. And it had been two before that. Well, is that what he's asking her to do right now? Like, not get married? Oh, um. 
Come on now, dude. Get it together. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, Martin, are you going to have to let her go? Leaf? Okay. Sad. So here's dude. I mean, what's happening now? This, this is just horrible. Well, does she want you to? I mean, squat needs to have a little bit more of a say. I mean, Lori, are you trying to marry this dude? That this needs to be happening? I mean, she could set herself straight up and out like, you want to use that? What the heck? Oh. Are these the um, Marquis of whatever? Is it Dansbury rules? If Lori ain't gonna say, then this is gonna happen. The Marquis of Queensbury or something. Oh, now come on. Yeah, bitch. Charlie, that's fucked up. If you don't want to marry him, then stop this. He ain't got nothing to be fighting for, right? Is he gonna punch him again? Mm. 
Self-defense, definitely. Were there? Oh, well, he got that from roughed up ways. He just decided to do that. Marty for real. <laughs> well, they are not going to let him speak. What did they do to him? Isn't he in it? Moses in shape for 1956. Oh, okay. No. Okay, yeah, he was in it. Look at his hateful face. Is he about to try and go get Debbie again? Go get her? Okay, so that dude, what was his name? Charlie said, 
he wasn't marrying this hoe. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, yeah, no, they said this chick had that horrific line to deliver just all in the vein of interracial <laughs> and their viewpoint on that. Well, in the past, they were always shining their little lights like that, right? The Comanches, isn't that their camp? That they're seeing them? I mean, for some reason, aren't they the ones doing that? I feel like I'm seeing those lights move, or is it just the flicker of their fires or whatever? Is the reverend down for them? I've been watching this movie for a long effing time, it feels like. Debbie. I like Martin in this movie. Well, a full he gets to say. All right. Yeah. you, Ethan, and, uh, you know, good luck with yourself. I mean, what, the search, right? What the F has the search been for, for Ethan? But I love that. I do love Martin in this movie because it's just like, yes, Ethan is as horrible of a person as he is, okay? And that's what a lot of Martin's dialogue is to um, go on ahead and feel righteous about how you recognize how bad of a person Ethan is. I mean, what is the redeeming quality about him? By the time that this is over, are we going to see him at all resemble? I mean, a human being. But I was just like a human being with feelings, empathy, sympathy. It's almost like with emotions, right? Because he seems to be just going off of vengeance only. Oh, he wants to help. Yeah. 
They just letting him come along. Why are these guys walking their horses? I mean, I, seriously, why are they doing that? The horses are making whatever noise that they are. Okay. Now mount them. That poor little boy, why was he walking like that? Scar um, knows that they're coming, right? Oh, that's Martin. No, she doesn't quite recognize that. Okay. This is Scar. Did Martin get Scar and he's okay? We need Martin to be okay. If somebody that deserves to survive right now, it is Martin. Okay, but is Martin okay? Oh, right, okay, John Martin. noticed this whole movie is that the color that my TV setting is on is pretty crappy and I think I just fixed that and I think I would have had a better viewing experience the whole time <laughs> yes I would have I yes I would have very much more enjoyed the cinematography of this okay yeah run run Debbie run Is he, yeah, okay, like, Martin is the worst thing that's gonna happen to you, whatever Ethan does right now? Oh my gosh. Did she just fall? Oh, he gonna say her name? Yeah, and she knows what's up, huh? He already tried to kill for it before. Pavrone. <laughs> Did that boy's knife get him? <laughs> what happened to the reverend? <laughs> that boy's knife. Everybody's come home,
Is Ethan leaving? No. Are we getting the end? Um, you know, I think it might be for the best. So, um, yeah, perfect timing on ending that. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Um, I asked the question by the end of the movie, are we going to see a sense of humanity in him? I, I guess we caught a glimpse and that it's, I think he needs to keep it moving. Okay. He got a lot of work to do and he needs to do it on his own. Um, the end. Wishing you guys the best, hoping that 2023 is going to be great and we will see each other when we can this upcoming year. Um, thank you so much for the support so far on the channel and, um, yeah. Hope you guys have had as much fun with it as I have. We've got plenty of content for you to binge. You know, as I am in here on any days off and it's like, I want to watch an old movie. You know what? I'm tending to want to watch something from this library and it is really fun to just go back into the vault. Um, never disappoints me, uh, Night of the Hunter. <laughs> if there's one, I feel like I want to make a playlist where it's like Crucial Classics recommendations or favorites and just kind of highlight a lot of the stuff that we already have in our catalog here on this channel. So that's what's up with me, you guys. Um, wishing you guys all the best and we'll see you when we can. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.